Okay, it's going. Wait, yeah. Action. It's going. And action. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, starting with thermo. All right. So, um, this is what I tried to make a video of. I think I made 40 million of these videos. So, I can pretty much know it all by heart. So, you have enthalpy, right? That, thermo is all about delta H, delta S, and delta G. All right, so let's start with delta H first. Delta H is enthalpy. Its units is kilojoules per mole reaction. Make sure they like it in that, those units, so make sure you do uh, put those units in when you, whenever you have your answer because um, they'll take off if you don't have the correct units associated with it. All right, so now the difference between endo and exo. We know that endo is a positive delta H, and what that means is that you're absorbing energy <coughs> Exothermic is a negative delta H, and what you're doing there is you're releasing energy. And so if you have something that is endothermic, what will you observe with the temperature? Is it going up or is it going down? Like if I have a reaction, it's endothermic. Does it increase in temperature or does it decrease in temperature? It decreases. All right, so it decreases in temperature. So exothermic increases in temperature, and that makes sense because any combustion reaction is exothermic. And exothermic combustion reactions are releasing energy. It gets hotter, so that's why temperature increases, temperature decreases here. All right, if we write, have to write heat here, heat for endothermic is a reactant, and heat for exothermic is a product. And then something very important to remember, students always get this messed up. When I am, like you know how in a reaction you have reactants and you have products. Your reactants have to break bonds and your products have to form new bonds. Breaking bonds in your reactant side is an endothermic process. All right, so it takes energy to break bonds. When I am forming bonds as a product, that is an exothermic process. So now let's talk about our graphs. We talked about it a little bit with kinetics, I believe. So you have energy versus your reaction progress energy versus your reaction progress. And let's say we want this one to be an endothermic graph and this one to be an exothermic graph. So what would our graphs look like? Are products higher or lower um, in energy in endothermic graphs? Higher, right. So endothermic <coughs> looks like this, all right, where these are your reactants. These are your products. Your products have higher energy than reactants. Your exothermic graph is the opposite. So reactants, products, products energy are lower than your reactants energy. The reason why, exothermic is releasing energy. So you're releasing energy out of that system so your products are lower in energy. Here, your products are higher energy because energy is being absorbed into the system. So that's why it's higher there. A couple of things you have to be able to label here. First of all, activation energy, and this is what we talked about before. Activation energy is both in the forward and the reverse reaction. So activation energy for the forward reaction is the blue line. Reactants to the peak. Reactants to the peak. Activation energy for the reverse reaction is the reverse, so products to your peak, products to your peak. So those are both your activation energies. What is the thing that lowers both of these activation energies? Catalyst, right? Catalysts lower the activation energy. That's the only thing catalysts do. They don't do anything else. Just lower the activation energy. You also have to be able to label delta H here. 
okay? So delta H is the difference between your products. Oh, this extra mark is already gone. Your products minus your reactants. So this distance here is your delta H. And it's a positive delta H because it's endothermic. For this delta H, it's your products energy minus your reactants energy. So this distance here is your delta H. It's a negative delta H because this is lower than that. And because it's exothermic. So those are your graphs. You absolutely need to know how to do those. <coughs> now let's talk about the equations for delta H. There's four of them that you could possibly use. Um, I think only one of them is on your equation sheet. And the one that is on your equation sheet is the Big Mama equation. Delta H of the reaction is equal to the sum of the delta H of your products minus the sum of the delta H of your reactants. There's a couple of things to remember here. So, one thing to remember is that your um, single elements are always zero. So if I have just oxygen by itself, just aluminum by itself, just iron by itself, just chlorine by itself, those are always zero when you plug it into that equation. Another thing you have to remember is multiply by coefficients. So if I have a two coefficient for water, then I have to multiply the delta H for water by two. Also, don't get caught up if they try to name delta H as a reaction something, dif something different. So if they say delta H, what is delta H of combustion? What is delta H of neutralization? What is um, delta H of, of decomposition, okay? Those are all just specific reactions that still code word for the total delta H of the reaction. Does that make sense? Okay. The second equation you need to know is kind of built on off of this. It's what I like to call the system of equations. System of equations. And so this is where you have the goal equation. Okay. Um, when you have that goal equation, if you reverse the reaction, that says reverse reaction, you um, flip the sign of delta H. <coughs> if you multiply some number by a reaction, then you multiply that same number by delta H. And if you add reactions, then you're going to add your delta H value. Remember, this is a little bit different from how we manipulate K, which is our equilibrium constant. If we were to reverse a reaction for K, we take one over. Here, we just flip the sign. If we multiply a number through a reaction for K in equilibrium, we take the square, or we, we like raise it to that power. Um, and here, we just multiply that number by delta H. And then here, if we add reactions, we add our delta H's. If this was K equilibrium, if we added reactions, we have to multiply our K. So don't get those two things mixed up. Um, let's see, that's part two. Part three, the third equation, is your bond energy equation. So that's delta H of your reaction is equal to the sum of the bond energies of your reactants minus the sum of the bond energies of your products. Notice how this equation is opposite of this equation. Don't get these confused. Utilize your equation sheet. See that this is on your equation sheet and just know that bond energies is backwards equation. You just flip it. Okay, react it's minus products. The biggest thing that you have to watch out for here 
is sketch out your bonds and count them, right? Sketch out your bonds. You have to memorize this right now, but you'll make sense of it when we do get to bonding. <coughs> but N2 is a triple bond. O2 is a double bond. And carbon likes to have four things attached. So sketch out your bonds, multiply that uh, bond energy value by however many bonds you have there. <coughs> and the very last one, I'm going to, and are you okay if I erase that right there? Are you still writing it? You're still, okay. All right. So the very last equation you need to know is the relationship between Delta H and Q. So this is the fourth equation. Delta H is equal to Q over moles. And more specifically, if you have more than one moles of something you're working with, it's the moles of your limiting reactant. <coughs> Q right here stands for heat. And it is just in joules or just in kilojoules. So the way that we calculate that is Q equals MC delta T. Your delta T right here is the only time when you're working with degrees Celsius. Remember that your mass is the mass of the system. So it's everything added together, all the mass is added together. And your C is specific heat. Most of the time you're going to use the specific heat of water, which is 4.18. Unless it tells you otherwise, use that number. And the units associated with that is joules per gram degree Celsius. So you'll <coughs> see when you get to find your Q, your Q is going to be in joules. So when you take joules divided by moles of your limiting reactant, you have to convert it to kilojoules after. When you find delta T, mm -hmm. is it the change in temperature? It is the change in temperature. Okay. And you can take the absolute value of it. It doesn't really matter like which is which. <coughs> I, but you know that if heat is released, it gets a negative Q. And if heat's absorbed, it gets a positive Q. So I like to just take the absolute value of everything and then plug in my negative or positive sign after. And then it translates to delta H as negative or positive sign. Best yeah. Mass of the system. So it's mass. So like if I have 100 grams of water and 2 grams of uh, potassium chloride, then it would be 102 grams that I plug in right here. It's the mass of everything together. Yeah. The Q, say what now? Like when you said heat released, it was... Oh, heat's released, Q is negative. Same thing as delta H. So if heat's released, Q is negative. If heat is absorbed, then Q is positive. <clears throat> Any other questions with that? All right, so you guys good with delta H? Just bring you back some memories. Now let's skip on to delta X. You okay with this? <coughs> what is it? <coughs> Delta S is entropy. Um, and this has units of joules per mole Kelvin. This is where you get tricked up when you plug it all together, then you get messed up on changing the correct units. So entropy is in joules per mole Kelvin. If you have positive delta S, that means that there's more disorder. If you have negative delta S, that means there's less disorder. Okay. So, when you are working with this, and you're seeing if there's more disorder or less disorder, you have to think 
on a molecular level. Okay, think on a molecular level. So what that means is you've got to visualize these, these molecules inside your head and because we know how solids look like, right? We did the FET simulation. Solids are low in energy. Um, solids do not have, um, they only have vibrational motion. Liquids are a little bit more energetic. Gases are very highly energetic, okay? So we, if I have a lot of energy, then you have a lot of disorder, okay? So if I have a solid in a reaction that is going to a gas in a reaction, what would I classify that as? More disorder or less disorder as the reaction takes place? More, more disorder because gases are more energetic, right? So this would get a positive delta S. If I was going in the opposite direction, my gas going back to a solid, I'd have less disorder there. So if you think on a molecular level for delta S, then you, you'll find that a lot easier to do. What do you do if you have all the same state? So all of these are gases. So let's say you have two moles of gas right there, one mole of gas right there, and two moles of gas right here. How can we figure out if there's more or less disorder? Three moles of gas to three moles of Right, three moles of gas to two moles of gas, right? So if you got three kids jacked up on Mountain Dew and cake running around, or you got two kids jacked up on Mountain Dew running around, which is more chaotic? The three. The three, right? So if I'm going from three to two, then I have less disorder, and that gives a negative delta S. Does that make sense to you guys? <clears throat> also, look at this. What if I have a solid going to different ions, right? So you have... Let's just say NaCl going to Na plus plus Cl minus. So these are little aqueous things, all right? Is this going to be more disorder or less disorder? More disorder. Why? Right, because it's splitting up. It's splitting up. I'm going to have more of them now, all right? And um, solids, low in energy, but ions can move, right? Ions can move. That's why we have an electric current that can happen. So this would be more disorder, so I have a positive delta S there. Um, for your reaction, or for, I'm sorry, your equation to find entropy, <coughs> that is the big mama equation. So delta S of the reaction is equal to the sum of the delta S of my products minus the sum of the delta S of my reactants. Again here, you have to multiply by coefficients. And that's basically it for delta S. <clears throat> we okay with that? Now on to delta G. So delta G stands for Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is delta G and it has units of kilojoules per mole reaction. <clears throat> and if I have a delta G that is positive, that means thermodynamically unfavorable. Yeah. Is it? Yes. Pause it. Why are we referring? <laughs>